Good. Now, tonight, we're talking about high blood pressure and cholesterol. <clears throat> now, not only is this my favorite subject, but it's the most frustrating. And it's the most frustrating because people think that high blood pressure is a disease, that it's dangerous, that you can die from it. I'm reading this book. Okay, it's called Medicine and Culture. And it's kind of enlightening. I mean, I read all the time, but this one's kind of fun because it compares the medical care that you get in England, France, Germany, and America. Now, you would think that it'd be the same, wouldn't you? Because we're taught that the doctors are actually scientific-based, that, that the therapies, that when you go in, they check, what is it, vital signs, okay? And then they prescribe certain therapies to regulate those vital signs, and this is supposed to make you live longer, happier, and healthier. Okay, yeah, none of that's true. Now, this is... This is one of the wordy slides. I made three wordy slides, but I can't, I can't not help it. I heard about this, this study that said 75% of all people who die of a heart attack have normal to low cholesterol. I want to look it up. Because if cholesterol is such a big myth that cholesterol doesn't clog arteries, cholesterol doesn't clog arteries. What did I just say? Cholesterol. Doesn't clog arteries. Okay, good. And if cholesterol is vital for hormone function, and if 75% of all people that have a heart attack have normal to low cholesterol, none of this stuff is working with the jargons and the dogma that you've been taught, right? So I look at the study, and sure enough, 136,000 people involved in the study, about six years long. And I'm thinking, this is amazing. 75% of these people. And then I look at, at what they were talking about, and I love this. Uh, Dr. Fonaro, okay, uh, you know, he's got a lot, a lot of credentials behind him. Of course, he's conducted research. I don't want you to get prejudiced about this because 75% of people who have a heart attack have normal to low cholesterol. So you might start to think, well, maybe cholesterol is not a problem, right? No, this guy's paid by the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, he said, um, with, within current target, 75% of heart attack patients fell within their current recommended targets for LDL cholesterol, demonstrating that the current guidelines might not be low enough. We might have to drug people more. Who pays him? GlaxoSmithKline, Pfizer, um, AstraZeneca, uh, Merck, all the drug companies are paying him to come up with the guidelines. Okay, so these are the top sellers. If you have no ethics or morals, uh, cholesterol-lowering drugs, statin is one of the best. It's the most profitable, the first drug to cross the $10 billion mark. Uh, <clears throat> but now, does it make you healthier? Well, I don't know. Let's take a look at this. The leading cause of death in America is medical care. The leading cause of death. Okay, now this is important when you start looking at this because so, so if, if these guys are really responsible for health, okay, if you're trusting your medical professional to go in and check your, what, what do they do? They check the blood pressure, then they send you off and they check your cholesterol, okay, then they, then, and you're going to find out tonight that those are really poor indicators of health. My car is red. Does that mean I'm healthier? It's just as a vital a check as, you know, the cholesterol, so it doesn't really make sense. But we're talking iatrogenic illnesses. This is doctor-caused illnesses. This means if you chemically alter physiology, you're going to do more harm than good. So uh, hypercholesterolemia is an actual disease. Of course, they don't die of heart attacks more. They just have elevated blood cholesterol. This affects 1 in 500 people. 1 in 500 <clears throat> Autism is affecting 1 in 33 boys. Okay, so this is infinitesimally smaller than autism, and autism is getting a lot of press nowadays, okay, because we're actually losing a generation. So I want you to get this, that 1 in 500 is a very small number of people, and still there's no studies that show that lowering it helps. So we have to come up with, because 1 in 500 is not a good market, we're not going to sell billions of dollars of this. We're not going to be able to bill you for billions of dollars worth of tests. We're not going to be able to generate that fear. 
So we have to convince the doctors, the media, the government, okay, we have to convince these people that cholesterol's a problem. Anybody know what the signs of high cholesterol is? There isn't any. You feel good. Okay, so we have to create a market here. We have to create fear that cholesterol is dangerous and that the market is bad. So high cholesterol has no outward signs, okay? You got to be convinced that it's a problem in order to take this drug that has a terrific amount of side effects. Now let's look at the studies because I'm, I'm a big one for actually looking at the science behind this. So if cholesterol um, isn't recognized as a problem around the world, and cholesterol is vital for the system. Let's look at the studies. Now, the All Hat study. Now, this is interesting. 10,000 participants. They showed a group that got the drugs, a group that didn't. The death rates were exactly the same. Okay, so it turns out that lowering cholesterol. Now, now, now what did this guy say here? 75% of all people who had a heart attack had normal to low cholesterol. Then we go in here. Cholesterol drugs are the leading seller. Then we go in here. The leading cause of death is medical care. Then we go in here. Hypercholesterolemia doesn't affect that many people. It's very, very rare, and the drugs have never been shown to help extend the quality of life. So we have to develop a problem. Then we go here, and we start looking at the studies. OK, I wanted to give you a synopsis, but can you start seeing it build? OK, can you see the arrows pointing to the big X in the sand? So I'm going to show you one group that features the All Hat study, and this is the antihypertensive lipid lowering treatment to prevent heart attack trial. They found out that it didn't change the death rate at all, whether you lowered it or not. Here's the PROSPER study, which is prospective study of Prevastin, which is a statin cholesterol lowering drug in the elderly at risk. And they found out absolutely no difference in death rate if you took the, the cholesterol lowering drug and nothing. So we know 75% all people that have a heart attack don't have, they have normal to low cholesterol, and giving them a drug doesn't change the death rate. However, in this study, it's interesting, the group that got the drug had an increased risk of cancer. Then we look at this one, Japanese study, I like this one. Now, if we all took a cholesterol-lowering drug, would we have exactly the same response? No. No, of course not. Of course not. We're common sense. Well, the Japanese did this too. So they gave about 40, uh, 48,000 people, 47,000 people, the drug. And then they divided them up after they gave them the drug. This affected you a lot. Didn't affect you a whole bunch. It affected you just moderately. And so then what they did is they took the people whose cholesterol was lowered below 80, which is really, really low, the LDL cholesterol, and those that weren't affected hardly at all, where it was still over 200, and then they compared the death and disease rates. Because if cholesterol really is a problem, we'd see higher problems in the people with higher cholesterol, right? Well, they had an absolutely no change in death rate, low versus high. Okay, now we look at this more. What does cholesterol do? Okay, not only is it the majority of the brain component, but let's just look at this. It's the number one uh, body's repair substance. So, oh, wait a think of this. It's used in tissue repair. So does that mean if you damage the arteries, if you damage the tissue, that the body's going to produce cholesterol in order to protect itself and to rebuild the tissue? Oh, yeah. Wow. So if we're taking, so somebody with high cholesterol actually has tissue damage. So we're taking away that, that repair process. Boy, that sounds stupid. Okay, so, so it's the precursor to everything that your adrenals make, and the adrenals produce every glucocorticosteroid, minocorticosteroid, and sex hormone. Testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Progesterone actually protects you against cancer. It's the precursor to vitamin D, which is the vital to the immune system. It's vital for bile salts, which help you break down fats, and fats help with the brain function. And then we start looking at this powerful antioxidant, protects us from cancer and aging, vital to neurologic function. Wow, this sounds really important. In vital in serotonin production, so that would be like for depression and anxiety. Okay, I got a question for you. And in fact, I'm going to give away a couple of videos at the end of this. Okay, and who can guess what costs more in this country, cancer or dementia? Okay, raise your hand if you say cancer. 
Raise your hand and say dementia. Dementia's win. Cancer, $77 billion a year. Dementia is about $203 billion a year. Okay, now, at cancer, now, $77 billion a year. What percentage do you think is breast cancer? This is the one that gets the money, okay? <laughs> Girls like it, so do guys, okay? Guess what percentage of that $77 billion is cancer, breast cancer? 6%. That's it. But it gets all the advertisement because it gets the money. So we have to start looking at reality. Lowering these functions, if we lower these functions, we're lowering neurologic functions, we're lowering memory, we're lowering immune system. If we actually pass these cholesterol drugs out, would we have dementia and Alzheimer's rampant in our country like we do now? Yeah. Absolutely we would. Okay. Uh, problems with low cholesterol. This means if you don't have enough, okay, we're talking edema, mineral deficiencies, chronic inflammation, difficulty in healing, asthma, reduced libido. That's okay, we got Viagra. Okay, so infertility. You start looking at this and it's just like, my gosh, all of these problems. Why would you want to even lower it? What's the benefit of lowering cholesterol? Hence, I got you an article on this on how to explain to a medical doctor that cholesterol is not a problem. It's not. In fact, it's a very piss poor indicator of your health. It's horrible. It's my car is red, I should be healthy. Uh, then we have these guys. Okay. The, 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 okay, again, I looked up scary on the internet. These guys, the National Cholesterol Education Program, they're, they were started by the National Institute of Health to educate you on cholesterol because you don't know anything about cholesterol. Wait, you do now. Does it cause heart disease? Does it cause cancer? Does it cause any of that stuff? No. Does, so, so we know that low cholesterol has more of a problem than high cholesterol? High cholesterolemia that affects one in 500. So, so it's, it's ridiculous. So these guys got to convince you, okay, because the way our governments run, pharmaceutical industry, biggest industry in the world, they fund the campaigns, the people that fund the campaigns fund the government, and the government funds the studies, and they have to convince you to buy the product. So they're saying that these charts, less than 100, okay, for LDL cholesterol, this is considered optimal, but we already know that doesn't change death rate, and low cholesterol is going to lead to dementia, Alzheimer's, cancer rates, all of that stuff. So they're causing heart disease, they're causing cancer by doing this insane recommendation. Now we have dementia, which is leading cause. It's more of a cause of problems in this country than, we, than cancer, more than heart disease, more than anything else. If you have three drugs, okay, your risk of dementia goes up. The average person over 60 is on 11 prescriptions. So, so this is, doesn't make sense. It turns out to alter physiology with a chemical. Is there any animal on the planet that cannot regulate themselves? This is a violation of biological law. The human animal is the same thing as a bear or as a deer. I mean, we're, we've been surviving here generation after generation. What makes you think that we can't regulate ourselves? Why is that all of a sudden a problem? And we see that changing that regulatory factor by altering your physiology with a chemical, you die early. You get more problems. So now, is cholesterol good or bad? Good. Good. Okay, good. Okay, that's, all of that was just for cholesterol. Okay, now we've got to talk about blood pressure. 1905, over 100 years ago, Dr. Karkoff, Russian guy, found out how to check blood pressure. <clears throat> now, this is going to sound crazy, okay, but I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, because in England, okay, according to this, they feel that you should have your blood pressure checked once every five years. <laughs> okay. That's appropriate, because it's really not that big of a deal. In this country, we have blood pressure checkers in every CVS pharmacy around, so we could build panic. Okay, but let's, let me describe how you check it. You close off, you increase this pressure on this cuff, okay, to close it off. And I measure how much pressure it takes to close off the blood vessels, because when I close it off, and I close it off all the way even beyond stopping the blood, and I put a listening device there, and then I slowly release the pressure on the cuff. And then as soon as I hear this whoosh, 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 I, I quickly write that number down. 
Okay, and I keep slowly releasing the pressure, and then I hear, whoosh, whoosh. I, I, it stopped. So I write that one down. Now the first one is supposed to be the output of the heart. The second one is supposed to be the overall resonating pressure of the body, but we're not quite sure. Okay, so what did I just measure? Did I measure the blood pressure or the amount of pressure it took to crush the blood vessels in my arm? Okay, is this why African Americans and athletes typically show that they have higher blood pressure? Yeah. <clears throat> possibly, possibly, I don't know. Okay, that's why it's not really accurate in every other country of the world. Okay, in this country, it's Bible. Okay, why? Because who funds the government? Pharmaceutical industry. If we create more customers, we create happier politicians because your money goes to support them. So, <clears throat> Harrison's medical textbook, the proper thing is to know when to treat and when not to. Okay, see, in a lot of the other countries, they want to make sure that you have healthy blood pressure. So when we look at this, is high blood pressure dangerous? So, um, this past weekend, I went to Mexico, okay, to go to my dentist, and they do vitamin C IV, and I'm coming across the border and inside of the car, they found out I wrote a book on how to cure blood pressure naturally. And so I said, I said, well, you know, is, is high blood pressure dangerous? What do you think the, the couple in the car with me said? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, high blood pressure is dangerous. And I, sa I said, good, you know, normal blood pressure, 120 over 80. That's for everybody. I know this. I listen. My doctor tells me. So then you start looking at it and you think, wait a second. Okay, if high blood pressure is dangerous, anybody work out of the gym? When you're straining, blood pressure could be 400 over 200. So do you see warning labels back away from the stair step your blood pressure could go up? Good God, don't get on that exercise bike. Your blood pressure is going to go up. Put that pot down. Don't garden. Don't exercise. No, all of that's foolish. Okay, see what happens is, and in fact, your body is even going to adapt okay, to different circumstances. Like if you have diabetes, like 30% of our population, the blood's thicker. If you have damaged arteries, the blood has to get through a smaller opening. Okay, so pressure has to go up. And then I said, I said to this couple, well, does blood pressure, high blood pressure cause stroke and kidney disease? Survey says? Yeah. Yeah. That's, what, that's what your program, good, I'm glad the program is working. <laughs> okay, but we're gonna break that now. Okay, see what happens is, you got an artery that's supposed to be big and healthy. If you damage the artery, Okay, what's going to happen? It's going to get a little smaller. See, now, now going back to the cholesterol, when they check your blood cholesterol levels, where did they get the blood that they can test? Do they get it out of the arteries or the veins? I'll give you a hint. They get it out of the veins. Okay. Now, this is interesting because it, it doesn't clog the veins. It clogs the arteries. So why does supposedly, because it doesn't really clog the arteries, but this is the medical world, okay? So we're talking ignorance. So, so why does the cholesterol clog the arteries but not the veins? And we're testing the blood in the veins. We're not testing the blood in the arteries. We're saying, oh my gosh, it's high. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. The arterial wall has three different layers. The inside layer is called endothelial lining. Anything that damages the endothelial lining is going to cause it to swell up. And if it swells up in a circle, what's going to happen in the opening? It's going to get a little smaller. So to get the same amount of blood or the same amount of oxygen and nutrients through the smaller opening, guess what has to happen to pressure? So let's say consistently you damage the endothelial lining. Let's say you're taking genetically modified foods or you have, oh, genetically modified high fructose corn syrup. Like that is the number one source of calories in America. Let's say you um, smoke or have toxic lifestyles. You're going to damage the endothelial layer, so the more damaged arteries, what has to happen to pressure? The higher the pressure goes. Now the kidneys, they're the size of my fist. They have to filter six quarts of blood every 20 minutes. So if they have to filter that and you're damaging the arteries, okay, what do you think has to happen to pressure if you have less surface area in the kidneys? You got less surface area, so you got to, what, what to the pressure? You got to increase the pressure in order to keep the same amount of blood flowing through there, right? <clears throat> so high blood pressure is an adaptation to damaged arteries. So the people that have damaged arteries, they're going to have a stroke, they're going to have kidney damage. Does that make more sense? So it's not that high blood pressure is danger and evil. The high blood pressure is a clue that you've got damaged arteries. Okay, so <clears throat> 
What they're finding out now too is that you can change your blood pressure and this is this is checking a student. They're doing this in England and it's the first way to check blood pressure in over a hundred years that's been new. <clears throat> you wear a monitor for 24 hours and it checks your blood pressure. Is his blood pressure the same throughout the day or does it go up and down? It goes up and down. I mean it's like crazy. So if you get a snapshot in time of where he's jabbed with a pin or having romantic relations, okay, you're going to say, wow, you got high blood pressure. If you're in Germany and you check him in the low end, you'd say, oh my gosh, you got low blood pressure. This is dangerous. See, in Germany, there's over 85 different therapies to raise blood pressure. Okay, they feel that, that uh, cardiac insufficiency, that not enough blood supply going to the body is really dangerous. <clears throat> so what's the function of blood? Does it carry oxygen? Does it carry nutrients? Is it vital to the immune system? Does it balance pH? Okay, so which one of those will you be healthier if you lower? Okay, so in the, if the doctor gives you a diuretic, a beta blocker, an ACE inhibitor, or some drug to lower it, say, Doc, aren't you lowering all those functions? Well, <clears throat> this is a standard patient. We're talking 56 years old, you can see he's got a problem there. So if he's got a problem, if he's got chronic pain or arteries that aren't healthy, and we know that if you're taking more than three drugs, your risk of dementia goes up and he's on 10, okay, do you think his healthy arteries are small? Small. So, so his body's trying to fight for this. So what we do is we talk to him about soluble fiber to clean the arteries. We get him out of that fight or flight state. We go in, we do a post x-ray, he's straight now, you know, the nervous system is clear, he's able to breathe. And he's amazed because his blood pressure goes down to normal. And he had to fight his doctor to say, hey look, check my blood pressure. No, I'm sorry, once you're on the blood pressure drugs, you've got to be on them all, all the time. Your whole life, you can't ever get off of them. And he says, well, it's low now, you're checking it. Yeah, but it's going to go back up. Do, can you see the flat earth technology? Of course blood pressure is going to go up. The guy might want to go to the gym. He might want to walk. He might want to carry groceries. Okay, he might want to sleep. This is insanity. So high blood pressure does not cause kidney disease. It does not cause stroke. The toxic deficient lifestyle damages the arteries. The body's going to adapt by elevating the blood pressure. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Okay, is it insanity or insanity to alter physiology with a chemical? We know from the studies that it's nuts. Okay, but you're ingrained in a culture where the pharmaceutical industry is trying to tell you that by taking this drug, you're going to be healthier. <clears throat> this is truth in advertising. It's a restaurant out in, out in Arizona. I think they got one in Vegas. The burgers are named quadruple bypass, triple bypass. Okay, they're named for what they cause. But, but when you look at this, I mean, you're taking things that damage the endothelial lining. Then how many people out there take a non steroidal anti-inflammatory, an Advil, a Tylenol, a Motrin? When I'm doing the physical exam, I'll say, are you taking any drugs? Nope, don't take any drugs. Do you, I mean, I'm talking any drugs, over the counter. Oh, well, yeah, I take the Advil, but you know, that's, that's for good performance. You know, I, you know, I work hard all day. And I'm going, oh my gosh. Okay, so if you take 20, uh, the average, and this was 80,000 women, 22 non steroidal anti-inflammatories a month. I'm not even talking like two an hour or two every four hours, 22 in a month. So this is less than one a day. Okay, your risk of, of high blood pressure and heart failure radically shot up. You've got an 86% chance of developing a high blood pressure. So when you go to the doctor and they check your blood pressure, do they say, are you taking any non steroidal anti-inflammatories? Because that can cause it. Are you deep breathing enough? No. Do you, do you have a toxic deficient lifestyle? Is your body trying to adapt because your body's intelligent? See, this is flatter technology. These guys need to be fired. <clears throat> Aspirin a day for a healthy heart. Should you take it? I put these studies here. No, it's dangerous. Aspirin is the leading cause of kidney disease and the fourth deadliest drug in America. The best blood thinner out there is a mixture of two gases hydrogen and oxygen. It's amazing. When they're mixed in the right form, they form a liquid called water. <laughs> now get this. It's 70% of your body. 
So 70% of your meals are water, okay, or water containing like plants or a plant-based diet, your body's going to be healthy. The best blood thinner is water. So if you're not drinking enough water, drink more. That's going to thin the blood. But to take the fourth deadliest drug in America and the leading cause of kidney disease to thin blood, is that foolish or crazy? Both. Yeah, I think both. Yeah, or, or, or ignorant, you know. But, but when you look at the studies, based on the results of this study, experts say that the treatment of heart failure involving a multitude of drugs that prove to be um, ineffective should be eliminated as a treatment option. I know, Rob, you were thinking that ineffective drugs were good. I know, I know, I know. But you start looking at this. I mean, when you read these medical studies, you think this is nuts. Okay, then you look down there. No difference, irrespective of the cardiovascular risk of aspirin use. This is the Journal of the American Medical Association. There's no difference. So it's the fourth, I mean, if this saved lives, I would be passing it out. It's the fourth deadliest drug in America and the leading cause of kidney disease with no benefit. With no benefit. Then we got epigenetic changes. You control the gene expression. You are not a slave to your genes. If you have Down syndrome or blue eyes or brown eyes, those are not going to change. You can control cancer genes, you can control diabetes genes, you can control all the other genes. You're controlling it by, by what's called genetic expression. We know this. We've known this for 30 years. You have a control above the genes. It's called epigenetic control. What this is dangerous it says that every pharmaceutical product out there, that means every drug that's designed to alter physiology, you're literally altering your chemical processes using you, your altering your physiology using a chemical. I mean, would you go to a, 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 a zoo and give a, a bear a blood pressure drug or a lion a cholesterol drug or a giraffe, you know, a diuretic? I mean, no, this is foolishness. All of these drugs, and we're looking at blood pressure drugs, anti-inflammatories, contraceptives, <clears throat> can cause heart disease, cancer, mental disorders, obesity, leukemia, uh, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. Do we have a, a population now where this is rampant? The drug use is rampant and the disease is from the drug uses. I love the quote from this. Consequences for modern medicine are profound. Because it would imply that our current understanding of, pharma, of, of pharmacology is an oversimplification. It is. Does anyone know how an antidepressant works? That is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, right? Yeah, that's not true. Okay. No, that's what the, that's what the TV tells you. And thank you for playing. No, uh, see, see, because the, they say they're selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, but when you look at the clinical pharmacology, the mechanism of action is unknown. We don't know. We haven't a clue. We think it slows down serotonin uptake, but we don't know. Anybody know how Tylenol works? We don't know. That's the deadliest drug in America and the most prescribed. We don't know. So if we don't know how those work, I mean, this is just insanity. The Helsinki businessman study. This is, this is a brilliant study, okay? They took two groups of guys, followed them for 15 years, okay? One group, they treated fantastic. So I'm like four times a year gave them every blood pressure drug, every cholesterol drug you could imagine. The other group, they saw them like once a year, they just gave them advice, they didn't think they were gonna follow. Smokers in both groups, everything, both groups were the same. What they found, the cause of all deaths were double in the treated group. However, coronary deaths, the ones that they treat the blood pressure and cholesterol drugs, were four times that in the drug group. <clears throat> now, remember, the, the pharmaceutical industry runs the world. You are running a lab. In fact, you are responsible for this lab. How do labs get paid? By the government of pharmaceutical industry. Pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry. So if you run a 15-year-long study costing thousands and, or hundreds of thousands of dollars and it shows an unfavorable result to your boss, are you ever going to get another job? Yeah. Okay, so the discussion, this is more fun. Okay, the discussion is way more fun than this. Okay, the unexpected results of the Helsinki businessman study. Okay, can you say, oh, okay, so seem to give a pessimistic impression of the multifactorial approach. I'm sorry, maybe I'm confused. Four times the amount of death rate if you treated these people with a blood pressure and cholesterol drug. Four times the amount of people died. Okay, I would call that pessimistic approach. <clears throat> okay, as a whole, the Helsinki businessman study results cannot be interpreted as, as refuting the current idea of drugging the heck out of people, altering their physiology with a chemical and expecting a crazy outcome. 
Okay, so when the medical world says this stuff, you have to start looking at this because, because their statistics are wrong. I mean, you realize that there's a 100% difference in stroke if you take a blood thinning drug. If you've had a stroke, you take Coumadin, of course, you will get all of these side effects, but there's a 100% difference. That's what the advertisement's going to say. In actuality, if you've had a, a cardiac arrhythmias, okay, and this means your heart just st skips a beat. Okay, now we're not talking about sending to the chiropractor to get the nervous system checked. This just, the theory is that if that heart skips a beat in that fraction of a second that it skips a beat, the blood vessels somehow are so fragile they're going to glue together, form a clot, go up to your brain and kill you. Okay, you have a 94% chance of never dying if you have cardiac arrhythmias if you do nothing. I mean nothing. I mean no vegetable juice, no soluble fiber, no diet change, no chiropractic, nothing. And you have a 97% chance of not dying if you take Coumadin. Okay, so that's a difference of how many percent? Three percent. However, how far away is 94 from 100? It's six, right? How far away is 97 from 100? Three. So that's a 100% difference. <laughs> I, I mean, this is how the studies are done. This is absolute ignorance. It's barbaric. Higher blood pressure at lower death rates. I actually put this in your packet here. Okay. Higher blood pressure at lower death rates. Turned out these people had heart damage. If you have heart damage, do you have healthy blood vessels or sick blood vessels? If you have sick blood vessels, what's going to happen, happen to pressure to keep the same amount of oxygen flowing? It has to go up. Okay, so, so this is just nuts. Low blood pressure, they think, they think if blood pressure falls below the minimum for sound health, they feel that 140 systolic is the minimum necessary in India for sound health, that it's vital. In Germany, they, they even call low blood pressure a German disease because they feel that cardiac insufficiencies are vital, they, that you have to raise blood pressure. This is why they've got 85 different therapies to raise blood pressure. I mean, th this is insane. Kidneys. High blood pressure does not damage the kidneys. If the kidneys are damaged from a toxic deficient lifestyle, pressure has to increase to get fluid through it. Now it only takes about 90 days to clear the kidneys. This one, there's six different studies here. I know they're hard to read, but we're talking the CDC, the Journal of the American Medical Association. I mean, these are all, these, this, this isn't Joe's medical journal. They all say that if you take a chemical to slow down the function. And, and this, I do this with every patient. And I'll sit them down and I'll say, look, you're taking a drug that slows your pressure down. It slows the heart down. Does that help oxygen of the brain or slow it down? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Does it slow oxygen down to the brain? I'm not kidding. Okay? What do you think happens if you slow the pressure down? It's going to slow oxygen down to the brain. The brain adapt by converting glycogen to glucose. That liver is going to break it down. It's going to dump it into the bloodstream to elevate it up. This is why people get on one, two, three, four, five different blood pressure drugs. And then they're misdiagnosed with, high, with uh, diabetes. It's, it's nuts. If you take a drug to alter your physiology, you're going to die an early death from heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. This one, I bought one of these. Respirate. You've got sensors in your neck. Okay, one senses carbon dioxide, the other senses pressure. If your carbon dioxide levels are high, then your heart's going to increase pressure to get more blood flow into the lungs to get the carbon dioxide levels low. If the carbon dioxide level's low, the heart's going to slow down to get that carbon dioxide levels back up. So do me a favor. Take a deep breath in. Blow it out. Now, if you did that for 15 minutes, you'd save 350 bucks. Okay. And you'd lower your blood pressure all day long. So the, one of the reasons we do such miracles here where we have 100% success rate in lowering blood pressure is I tell people you have to sit with your arm level with your heart. Sit. Take deep breaths for 15 minutes. And then take your blood pressure. Think it'll be low or high? Low. Yeah, except I remember I'm talking to people that think the world's flat. They don't have the option of sitting here for, for a half hour to health talk. So I say, look, do you want to take blood pressure bike riding? No. Well, why not? Oh, because it'd be high. Do you want to take blood pressure while you're working out of the gym? No. Why? Because it'll be higher. 
Okay. Oh, so what you're telling me is that different activities are going to cause your body to elevate blood pressure. Good. Well, I'm going to tell you an activity because you want low blood pressure for some reason, okay, because you've been programmed to that, okay, that it takes 10 minutes to alter your physiology. You've got to deep breathe for 10 minutes. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Yeah, I think so too. Okay. So, and, and that, oh, by the way, this thing, it, it, the advertisement guaranteed to work when blood pressure drugs aren't effective, breathe deep for 15 minutes, lasts all day. What's the name of this machine? Oh, it's called Respirate. Okay, great machine. You got more money than cents, go get it. If not, deep breathe, put your arm down. Okay, you're going to be fine. Okay, because honestly, I got it and it was kind of cool because it has a little breathing sensor and you listen to a tune, it goes do do do. You exhale, do, no, 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 no. Okay, so it slows down the tune, and you're listening to this thing for 15 minutes, and it works. If you can, well, it has prettier tune than my voice. Okay, but what's frustrating is, is I'm sitting here. All I can think about is the 350 bucks I spent. Okay, when I'd rather have that. Okay, take my kids away for the weekend, and just sit there and meditate. I mean, I meditate every day. Yeah, so this is, this is ridiculous. This right here is a crime. I had a patient, she was with, with us for, oh, about like five, six years. She moved away. <clears throat> then she called me up, and then this is just a few months ago. And, and she said, because she said, this, is, this is what happened. She had chest pain, okay, and left arm numbness, okay, like, like real severe indigestion and left arm. Okay, and that's, that's a sign of what, sir? Heart attack, yeah, he's a doctor, he's you know, in clinic now, right? Okay, good, so he knows, you know this, and that's what we're taught, memorize and regurgitate. Okay, jaw pain, left arm pain, indigestion, man, get her checked for heart. So she does, they go in there, they check her for the heart, they couldn't find anything. Then they give her um, a, a radioactive dye for an angiogram, they couldn't find anything. Then they gave her radioactive dye and a chemical stress test. So she's sitting in a chair, shaking like this with the radioactive dye, and then they take an x-ray. They said, hey, we found something. Okay, I'm just guessing. Do you think two rounds of radioactive dye and a chemical stress test might have altered the physiology a little bit? Okay, well, anyway. So they do a couple of stints, and now these are wire cages going inside of an arterial system that expands out. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't the endothelia live, live the lining of the heart living tissue and having a wire cage in there, doesn't that, that doesn't make much sense? You'd be right. Okay, but anyway, they put the two stents in there, then they put her on blood thinners and a couple of blood pressure meds. Three weeks goes by, she has the exact same symptoms. Indigestion, left arm pain. And she calls me up, she says, Dr. Bergman, Dr. Bergman, you know, and she tells me the whole story. And I said, I said, Nance, do, do me a favor, okay? Put your right ear on your right shoulder, just leave it there for a little bit, take a couple of deep breaths. <sighs> How's your left arm? Hey, it's feeling a little better. Okay, now Nance, what I want you to do, I want you to lean to the right side, just lean over here, just kind of hang out there like that. How's that feel? How's the digestion going? Hey, chest pain's a little bit better. I said, yeah, you know, you've got irritation of the diaphragm, probably from the stomach, and you got a pinched nerve in the neck causing it. So all you got to do is just walk around like this, <laughs> or get in, you know, we'll get a fresh set of x-rays and we'll see. And sure enough, she comes in and we see pressure on the nervous system. These are the nerves that supply the heart through there. So we take pressure off of it and the symptoms go away. I, 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 uh, you know, of course she's off the drugs, but how accurate were the tests they gave her? An angiogram, okay, you can put accurate 22% of the time. Read that backwards, it's inaccurate what? 78% of the time. Now you get the same test read by the same person, it's only accurate less than a third of the time. Stints cause clot deforms because they can't put this wire right around the area that's damaged. It might not cover it, it might not be there. Then they tried to medicate the stents. Now, a few weeks ago, the, the industry, the pharmaceutical industry, is now exempt from any lawsuits from any chemical they ever produce. So, you know how Vioxx killed 60,000 people, killed more people in Vietnam? They cannot be sued for things like that anymore. The Supreme Court held them up or held up, I know this is, this is a brand new rule, but they cannot be sued for any product they pr produce that, that damages or kills. Iceland reduced their coronary heart disease rate 80% in 20 years, ours went up. 
they found out that the miracle heart attack present um, disease prescription turned out to be getting more exercise, eating nutritious foods, and not exercising. What does that do to the arteries? It cleans it. I know, this is just common sense. One serving of vegetables a day reduces the heart attack risk. See, blood vessels don't clump together or don't clot, they clump together. They can't clot in the arteries, they can clump. If you have polyunsaturated fats like canola oil or, or cottonseed oil or soy oil, all of those polyunsaturated fats cause the blood vessels to get sticky and they clump together. You got sticky blood, what's gonna, the pressure has to do? It increases not to do damage but to keep you alive. Okay, you take vegetables, it separates the red blood cells. That's a clogged artery and a clear artery. The, the, there's a ravediet.com, the movie that we have here that we bought about 50 copies of called Eating. You see a medical doctor that had a heart attack. One artery 85% occluded, the other 90% occluded. They cleaned them both in 90 days. Arteries can be cleaned. I mean, this Ray, 12 years of high blood pressure. He didn't have high blood pressure. He didn't have high blood pressure. He was diagnosed with high blood pressure. Did he have damaged arteries? Yes or yes? Did he have evidence of physical pain? Yes. Yeah. High blood pressure is an adaptation. It's not a disease. Okay? Yeah, luckily I wrote the book. I don't, uh, I forgot to put the mm, picture up here. <laughs> this is what you require for health. You cannot regulate your physiology with a chemical and expect to get a positive result. It's impossible. It's against, it's a violation of biological law. Does that make sense? Our entire medical system is built on a lie. Okay? It's completely false. It's, it's completely false. You need to get your nervous system checked. You need to get regular exercise. You need to get proper nutrition. This means if man makes it, you don't eat it. Polyunsaturated fats, most of the packaged food, most of the, the genetically modified foods, all of those will damage the nervous system, damage the arterial lining, leading to the body to protect itself by elevating what? Blood pressure. And if you got real damage, it's going to elevate cholesterol to do the tissue repair. Sufficient rest and prayer and meditation because we're more spirit than matter. I mean, that's, that's vital. Now, when we look at this, Lori's got some coupons in the back. Everybody needs to get checked. And we're doing a, a, a vital scan, three scans that check your disease risk assessment. And I know some, some of you already had it done here in this office. If you're a patient of mine already, you get it for free. If not, it comes with everything else. We check heart rate variability, which checks your disease risk assessment. We check um, organ and gland involvement using a rolling thermal scan and a surface electromyography, which measures your body's resistance in space and any x-rays that I feel that are necessary. That's, it's a little bit more than $275, it's only 20 bucks. So now we've had patients come in this week from Canada, from Mexico, from um, United Kingdom. Guess what it cost them? 20, 20 bucks, I know. Because you would do it too if you could afford it, right? I know, it's pretty cool. Now all of these are recorded. Next week, this is gonna be really fun. We're coming up to chew, flu season. Okay, so we're going to talk about the new flu vaccines. No longer, if you're allergic to chicken eggs, is that an out. There's a way to still get it. Plus, there's four new mediums that they're going to be growing the flu vaccine in that are very exciting. <laughs> okay, because I mean, up till now, we've known that they grow them in chicken eggs, so living chicken eggs, and we're going to detail out how that's done. They're now growing them in green monkey kidneys, an immortal cell line of green monkey kidneys, by the way, and, and in fact, no, immortal cell line of green monkey kidneys. This means that they're cancer causing, they're neoplastic cells. And then an immortal cell line of dog kidneys, and also caterpillar larvae. And, and, don't buy yet choppers, aborted human fetal cells, another, and they're all immortal cell lines except for the caterpillar larvae, this is going to be brand new, and we've never seen all of this injected into human beings. So we're going to go over that next Tuesday, don't miss. Thank you very much. <laughs>